Solving problems may be the chief skill that you learn as an engineer. The first step in solving an engineering problem is to read the problem. Notice as I read the problem, I will emphasize certain things that are not actually in the wording of the problem. Two forces, vector P and vector Q, are applied as shown at point A of a hook support, knowing that the magnitude of P equals 45 pounds and the magnitude of Q is equal to 15 pounds. Determine graphically the magnitude and direction of their resultant. So I've emphasized the fact that the boldface print indicates P and Q are vector quantities, and that the non-boldfaced P and Q are strictly magnitudes of those vector quantities. The next step is to identify the information that is given. And we want to do that explicitly. That is to say, we want to write out an equality or something that tells us what it is we know. In this same problem then, we know that P is equal to 45 pounds in magnitude and Q is equal to 15 pounds. And the diagram tells us that theta sub P is equal to 15 degrees from the lower vertical and that theta for Q is equal to 30 degrees from the lower vertical. <clears throat> And I should emphasize that theta sub p, which is 15 degrees, that's actually in the negative direction. Keeping in mind that clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive. And the direction for q is in the positive direction. Now you may recall that all angles should be measured from the positive x-axis in the counterclockwise direction for a positive measure. And so given that, theta sub p is actually equal to, remember the lower vertical is 270 degrees, so the 270 degrees minus 15 degrees which is 255 degrees. And theta sub q is 270 degrees plus 30 degrees. And that's 300 degrees. So there's the given information from the problem. The next step, identify the information or answer you are trying to determine. Otherwise stated, what is it we're looking for? Well, this problem says we want to determine graphically the magnitude and direction of their resultant. Now, graphically means we're actually going to draw these quantities at the proper vector direction. Keeping in mind now, P is 45 pounds, Q is 15 pounds. So the resultant is P vector plus Q vector. So we need to add these two vectors together. And if we're to do so graphically, we have to keep in mind how do we add vectors graphically. The next part, draw a diagram that represents the situation. And I will emphasize that big pictures work best. Whenever possible, you should work at a whiteboard as much as you are able to. You'll get a lot more out of a large picture than a small picture. So there's already a diagram in this problem, but we're going to add another diagram to emphasize the fact that we're doing this graphically. So P is in a direction of 15 degrees from the horizontal and has a magnitude of 45 pounds excuse me, 15 degrees from the vertical. 
and Q is at 30 degrees, but only has a magnitude of 15 pounds. So it's going to be roughly this large. And so the resultant of these two vectors, if I redraw this a little bit, is this red vector. So here's P, and here's Q, and the red vector represents P plus Q, the resultant. Determine which principles you choose to use to solve this problem. There could be more than one principle, but for our problem, it's pretty much graphical arithmetic. of vector quantities. <clears throat> if I go back to my diagram, there's 15 degrees. By alternate interior angles then, this is also 15 degrees. This is 30 degrees, and therefore, this must be 180 degrees, minus 15 degrees, minus 30 degrees, which is 135 degrees. And so as I look at that resultant, I know this is 45 pounds, 15 pounds. 135 degrees, and I'm looking for the red side, P plus Q. Now I can find the red side by using the law of cosines. So there's another of the principles that we need here. And the law of cosine says 45 pounds squared plus 15 pounds squared minus 2 times 45 pounds times 15 pounds. And the cosine of the angle in between the 45 pound and the 15 pound vector, which is 135 pounds, will equal the P plus Q vector Squared. Keep in mind that this right hand side is only a magnitude. And I can solve this equation on my calculator. And if I do that, I get a magnitude for P plus Q, and the magnitude goes in absolute value sign of 56.6 pounds, because the units all have to match. And then I can use the law of sines, if I so desire, to find this angle, which I'll call alpha. And the law of sines says that the sine of alpha over 15 pounds equals 
equals the sine of 135 degrees. over 56.6 pounds. And so alpha must be Keep in mind, you know, the whole angle around here was 255 degrees. And when I add another 10.8 for this, that tells me the whole angle around for the resultant vector, 255 degrees plus 10.8 degrees. 265.8 degrees or 4.2 degrees from the vertical. Okay, we've already done the equations. We did the law of cosines and the law of sines. And those are the equations involved in using trigonometry to find vector quantities. Those are the principles that we're working with here. So we've already done that step. <clears throat> We've set up the equations, we've solved them. And then we review the answer and the values that we had are reasonable. Now if we had had a value of say 200 pounds or an angle of five degrees or 10 degrees from a horizontal, those would not correspond nicely with our drawing. And that would tell us we probably have an issue. But so far, everything here looks good. <clears throat>